Hello and welcome back. Today is the Mother's Day, so we're going to talk about profound effect that our mothers have on our development. I'm going to share with you a tale of two mothers. One of them is a narcissistic mother of one of my patients, and another one is my own mother. This is me, Dr. Ruben Gagarin. I'm your favorite family psychiatrist, so let's begin with the case. As usual, I change a lot of details, but I kept the story. Vivian is a 15 years old female. She was brought to us by police and was admitted for suicidal thoughts. That day, Vivian had a big argument with her mother. She felt profound hopelessness, helplessness, and uh, felt lonely. She hurt herself by cutting, and then she decided to end her life because she could not stand feeling this way. She ran from home towards the bridge where she was uh, going to jump off and uh, she texted goodbye message to one of her friends and stopped responding. The friend suspected something and uh, called police. Police located her near the bridge using her cell phone, so she was found and was brought to us. When we started talking a little bit deeper, it turns out that uh, Vivian has been feeling quite depressed for a while. She said that uh, for months and months she was uh, feeling as if she is disappointment, mainly to her family, her parents, but also to her friends. Uh, she felt sad, she lost concentration, even her grades at school started going down. One of the reasons she felt this way was because her mother was trying to stop her from talking to her friends. See, the mother caught her smoking cannabis with her friends, so she concluded that her friends were a bad influence on her, and it's because of her friends she was using drugs, so she was trying to cut the friends off. But Vivian told us that it wasn't the friends, she was the one who asked for cannabis because she felt this deep depression and she did not really care for the consequences. When she was first brought to the emergency room, her mother came with her, but after a couple of hours she left and uh, Vivian was there mostly by herself. When she was brought to our unit, we noticed that she was indeed very sad, she was tearful, lonely, she was homesick, but most of all she was profoundly worried about potential consequences of this incident. Vivian told us that if she starts crying during an argument with her mother, she is sent to her room for the rest of the night, and uh, the next morning her mother behaves as if nothing happened. So the issue that caused the argument would never get resolved. Sometimes when the parents were disappointed with her, they would give her a silent treatment for a couple of days, and that was completely intolerable to her. On our unit, Vivian was polite, she followed all the rules, she cooperated with us and communicated appropriately with her peers, but uh, when her parents came for the family meeting, they shared a completely different vision of uh, Vivian. They saw her as a big liar, uh, she was, they said she was deceitful, she was stealing, uh, running away from home, so more and more they were uh, doubling up on uh, punishment for her. This is this different. See, this is interesting because we assess Vivian 24-7, we started with neutral approach, non-judgmental, and I believe we got more accurate picture. Whereas her parents, they see Vivian through their own lens, through their own experience, and uh, they may have distorted image of her personality. They are probably right about the facts. I'm sure that Vivian did run away from home, did break rules, especially when it came to communicating with her friends, and uh, possibly took money without permission or something like that. But that is not because she did not care about their feelings, but she was trying to get her social needs met any way possible. So she had to break the walls that the parents built around her because she did not see any other way. Let's leave Vivian for a few minutes to discuss discharge with her parents and our social worker. And in the meantime, let me tell you about my experience growing up. I am uh, very grateful to my mother for being there for me, for being supportive. My experience was completely different because she respected my boundaries. I feel as if she created this space around me without controlling me. She, uh, she made sure that I was safe to uh, discover who I am and grow into the best version of myself. And although maybe I didn't become 100% what my potential could have been, but I'm sure that she is uh, proud of me.
In any case, I'll give you a couple of examples. My mother has never told me who I should hang out with and who I should not talk to. And see, I did have some bad influences. I know that one of my friends ended up uh, incarcerated, another friend was using drugs, uh, one of my friends disappeared under very suspicious circumstances. So there were individuals around me, but Interestingly, since I had my own strong sense of self and set of values that my mother allowed me to develop, I didn't fall for it. What also was happening, she protected my feelings as well. This is a very important example. When my mother came from work extremely stressed, she would tell me not to speak with her for some time, then she would stay alone for a bit, for a while, and uh, she would emerge in uh, much better spirits, uh, so we can, we can discuss our day. In this example, you can see that she was caring about my feelings. She did not try to use me to help her with her emotions, but she took into account how I would feel if she starts taking it out on me. Since she did not have a male partner, she connected me with other paternal figures, maybe somebody who she worked with or her friends, so I wasn't so isolated. I also spent quite a bit of time with her brother, my uncle, so and that was very helpful for my development. One of her brothers, for example, was a professional artist and a photographer, so he was the one who gave me my first camera. So, see, here I am talking to you because I know how to use the camera, so and uh, that became a passion of my life. In any case, I cannot directly compare myself with Vivian. We are different people, we were born in different generations, we have different temperament, she is definitely much more emotional than I am, and uh, she seemed to have more social needs than I did, but nonetheless, Nonetheless, I can compare the parental styles. Let's go back to our family meeting. See, when Vivian's mother arrived to the meeting, she did not say hello to Vivian, only briefly glanced at her, but most of the meeting she was looking at me and uh, uh, talking to me, ignoring Vivian completely, who was quietly crying in the corner. That made me think of uh, lack of empathy that uh, that mother has to Vivian. But Interestingly, all the mothers trying to raise their kids, prepare them for the world the way they see it, so they don't get hurt and they are protected. I think that Vivian's mother growing up probably had a lot of trauma. So her view of the world is that the world is very cruel and cold place, so she would rather hurt her daughter for her own good, so she sort of becomes more tougher and uh, she would never show the emotions so nobody could hurt her. That only happens, or like for the most part happens, to people who got hurt themselves growing up. Ironically, I think that if I compare myself and my mother's more supportive stance with uh, Vivian's mother's stance and her support of her daughter, I think that uh, it is easier for me to deal with the stress. I survived immigration quite well, I adjusted to different environments, I had friends from different walks of life, so I think that giving her child a cold shoulder did not quite work, at least for Vivian. Another thing that I noticed with parents similar to Vivian's mother is that they see their children as blank slate. They take full responsibility for their decisions, uh, for them growing up, and I think they do so because they want to take credits for their achievements as well. But see, in this case, they don't give the kids room to grow and to become themselves, so their children never discover who they are, so they have to fight for their identity. Based on all of this observation, I think that Vivian's mother has a narcissistic personality disorder, but not the typical one that you would think of, but uh, a type called vulnerable narcissism that is more common among females. The three salient features of narcissistic personality disorder is a pattern of grandiosity, demands for admiration, and a lack of empathy. People who have this condition often brag about their achievements, over-exaggerate, take other people's credits, seen as if they're much more powerful than they are, and uh, if 
this grandiosity is uh, challenged or they are not being admired enough, they become angry, resentful and vindictive. And since they don't care about other people's feelings, a lot of people get hurt. Because females, unfortunately, over the years have been more suppressed. So it is not okay for them to express their grandiosity. So it becomes hidden and very subtle. For instance, if Vivian's mother was fully aware of her motivation and thinking and her emotions, she would have probably tell us something among these lines. I am the perfect mother. There is no mother better in the world than me. Since I am the perfect mother, then my children should be also perfect. And the perfect children would never have any mental illness, suicidal thoughts or psychological problems. Since Vivian reported suicidal thoughts and was admitted to the inpatient psychiatric unit and it is not possible for my children to have mental illness, therefore the only explanation that Vivian is lying. And the reason why psychiatrists talking about her mental health issues is because she is very deceitful and she is the best liar. She fooled everyone around her, but she cannot fool me, the perfect mother. I can see through that and I'm gonna punish Vivian and my punishment is withdrawal of love. If I think about my growing up, I remember maybe one situation when my mother and my sister gave me silent treatment. Honestly, it lasted maybe 15 minutes and uh, never repeated again. It felt horrible and I would never wish something like that on anyone. My punishment for the most part was a discussion. Uh, so my mother was, would talk to me about potential circumstances of my bad behavior and uh, she would tell me not ever to do it again. So for the most part, I listened, but I'm not perfect. What can I say? Now, coming towards the end of this video, I would like to talk about practical advice. Now, if you have children or planning to have children or you have a difficult relationship with your mother, first step, you should look inside yourself. You should see what are your motivation. Try to be mindful of your own emotional needs and ask yourself, are you doing anything that is hurting your children? Now, Next step, you can ask yourself, am I using my children to meet my own needs? For instance, if you feel unsuccessful, and this may be just a feeling, and uh, you want your children to be successful so you feel successful, then again, maybe you should talk to your therapist and uh, figure out why uh, this is happening. It is very important to be mindful of uh, your children. And I don't necessarily mean to sit down and uh, focus on your breathing. What I mean is to try to evaluate and see your children as if you have never seen them before. Every day they are going to be different. So every day you can repeat this exercise and uh, try to see them as if you see them for the first time. And then when you truly see them, then you should be able to see what are their needs. Some kids may need a strong hand and uh, punishment and strict boundaries. But for the most part, the kids need sort of loose boundaries, protection around them, like uh, distant walls, so they can run around inside and uh, experiment and become their best version of themselves. At the very end, I would like to say thank you to all the mothers. Thank you for bringing us to this world. Thank you for letting us to struggle through our emotional and uh, cognitive needs. And uh, as we achieve one step after another, we feel successful. And uh, what matters is the journey. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.